Hello everyone. Um, doing a quick uh, follow-up video on uh, reviewing the mods for my XDS um, that I showed in an earlier video that I'll link back to. Um, you should see a little link right up around here somewhere um, if you want to go back and watch that video and then come and watch this one. Um, but um, yeah, I wanted to do a follow-up because I uh, follow a video because I did a couple of videos about playing around these magazine extensions and mods that I made with the gun. Um, and then I went and recently took a a, a two-day training course where I put a lot of ammo through the through the gun and uh, you know really tried out how all these magazines would work and how everything would function. So um, I thought it'd be interesting to it's one thing to you know put make some mods to the gun, run a couple of run a couple of tests at the range, and then you know do a video about it, but. Uh, I put some heavy, pretty heavy use through uh, through this gun over the basic, pretty much over the course of a day and a half, um, firing what's the round count I got here? Six hundred and sixty-one rounds um, through it, and a couple of interesting things really, really happened um, as part of that training. Um, so first, first things first, kind of the good news. Um, I did put the Optimus Defense uh, extension on my nine round magazine. Um, according to the Optimus Defense website, uh, this is not supposed to work. Um, I did a video where I showed it and it and, it, and everything looked fine um, because I was having issues with this on my seven round magazines, as you can see here with the one like I have my Pierce on now, my Pierce extension, which is this is my primary carry magazine in the holster because um, yeah, this this layout and everything is just just great with the XDS, especially at my at the height I carry the gun. If you can kind of see by the clips here. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see by the clips. I don't know how this is going to show up on camera too well, but you can kind of see that this rides right across, right at waistband. So it's it's almost below my waistband. So I really need to dig down and when I unholster it. So having this pinky um, extension is is it's more useful in all honesty. It's more useful for drawing the gun than even firing it. So that's why this is my primary right now. Um, here's the nine rounder. That's that right now is my my backup mag but but anyway that's kind of besides the point um anyhow um found a couple of very interesting things like i said this ran fine despite the disclaimers on the website um as i said there was issues with the slide holding back with the uh with this one i've been doing hand testing and with some limited range testing before so i put it on here to get a 10 round xds magazine um look stupid ran great no issues at all during the training um hold back the slide worked great you know dropping the mag when it's full um no blemishes on here at all so that worked great so this is a decent option if you want your 10 round xds magazine and don't want to go to the pro mag route um which i believe pro mag makes it makes a 10 rounder for this but i can't say for certain but anyway this guy is great thumbs up this configuration is a good good deal so take that off the table um and again for comparisons here here are the two of these guys the next on the magazine end is the bad news, or pretty bad news, really. Um, so you can see, I hope you can see, this is the Galloway Precision um, six round magazine, six round, uh, sorry, eight round, uh, plus one extension on the seven round magazine to give you eight rounds. A um, couple of things about this. Um, I got halfway through testing, and when I was hand testing um, with this ammo, this is a box of ammo that we are forced to use. Um, during the training, um, Sig Sauer uh, frangible. It's Sig Sauer 100 grain frangible and ammunition and in plus P configuration. So the plus P kind of beat up my uh, hands a little bit during the training, but uh, that's what we were using. You know, here's the round. You know, it's a basically a copper bullet. Um, but anyway, uh, that's besides the point. We'll, we'll touch a bit more on the ammunition a little bit. But the interesting thing with this extension. Um, I noticed after using it for a while, and I don't know why that necessarily is, but it was started holding back the slide. I was like, oh yeah, this is great. This is awesome. So maybe this really does work. Um, however, when I, I noticed after a while, when I got back to the loading bench, you know, cause I was, you know, we would go and change off and load up our mags really quick, trying to stuff everything in that, um, well, let me just show you here. Right. So here we go. Um, right now there is six rounds in the magazine. I hope you can see that. You can see the round indicator there. Um, I'll pop them out at the end just to show you. Um, there's six in and 
There is seven now. All right, there's seven. So this is this extension. You're supposed to get eight. And no. In my mag anyway, at least this mag magazine, my seven round magazine with this extension, this plus one extension suddenly becomes um, nothing more than a grip extension. You know, the round doesn't fit in there. So what happened? You know, I'm at a, we're at a training course. We're going through, we're dropping the mags, reloading and everything else. It seems like I would pretty much say it must be something to do with the spring tension in here. It doesn't look like the base plate moved at all, but it looks like the spring tension is such that when it's dropped on its end, like you would, it uh, suddenly dislodges something internally to the magazine. And right, there's four that was in. Here was our failed eighth. And um, something dislodges, so... Um, the spring doesn't fully compress down into the extension any longer. Um, make make matters worse, you know, it's pretty reproducible. Um, when I got home from the training, I took this apart, reset everything, and I got back the full eight capacity in this configuration. I was like, oh, okay, that's great. But I bet you if I drop it again, it's probably gonna go back to this, the same configuration. Literally before I started recording this video, I just dropped this magazine empty on the concrete floor in my garage here about four times tried to load it up and you saw the results so um yeah a lot of questions about about this um like i said i really hope at some point to find a plus 10 percent spring for this um but right now it seems like it's a pretty big waste of junk especially for me for my gun in my configuration i'm assuming it's due to this spring tension internally um and that a better spring would really fix things but uh, i don't know i definitely would want to try a heavier spring um to see if the slide will lock back and you know we can just do some quick testing i know this might make some people nervous there's ammunition on the table and just to test the see it locked back um kind of consistent with my previous video there's you know very little tension pushing up on the slide keep it in there um you know, it seems like after the training, it's been working a bit better to at least hold back the slide. Um, but again, it's there's it's not pushing up very much like it should really be up right here, um, like these other magazines would. But I have ammunition on the table. I'm not going to go too crazy testing this stuff around. All my magazines are loaded. So anyway, um, this, if you see it, um, I really recommend not buying it. Um, I bought it. Um, probably still going to use it on and off, but I'm pretty sure um, this is coming off and I'm just going to put the, the flat base plate on here or look at getting more Pierce extensions. I'm not going to put this on my like nine round magazine because then it's going to look really stupid, um, even stupider than this. But um, yeah, really disappointed, really disappointed in this. So maybe we can revisit if I find another magazine spring, but right now, um, you know, don't buy. It looks, it looks good. It's very... You know, it feels great. You know, it's an aluminum. It's machined. It's painted really well. Um, it's a bit scuffed up from dropping it a few times here now. But, but yeah, it's it's just not working well. So, that's it. All right. Last thing. Um, I was training mainly from appendix reholstering a lot um, into this. Um, one interesting thing. You can see it's the vent core is really starting to contour to the gun. And into uh you know the shape of the gun and, and into my body which is great uh, as i should say this is a stealth gear usa holster um which i love i love this this is great um work great for training even though you know i'm you know a little soft around the center um trying to rehold through this it does kind of you know and again reholstering is not a race but trying to reholster this you know up against my body and everything else um i really was Pretty much pulling this back and then inserting the gun like so if you can kind of picture that um you know we learned how to re reholster appendix properly and i was doing a little bit of rubbing of the slide against the holster and this is pretty much from the uh, sec from one full day of training where it probably reholstered the the gun into this about must have did about between you know 50 and 75 times um so it is a little bit aware um i don't know what they're what their warranty is but you know this really doesn't bother me yet but but this this worked great for the training um one thing i would say about it and the soft back and being a little soft around the center and i was wearing an undershirt um 
I did have one occurrence where I was in training. They had me sitting in a vehicle and I tried to reholster. It was the third time while I was sitting in a reholstered. And it's kind of the reason why I love the XDS. And didn't notice until I got out that I had reholstered the gun into the, put the gun in the holster and I had cotton, caught the shirt completely pushed in, into the trigger guard. Um, I would think with the soft backing, it kind of expanded a, pretty much to let everything fit in. Um, but you know, it, makes one a little nervous when something like that happens but you know had that extra little bit of safety where i was trying to you know angle the gun as far apart away from my body as possible so it wasn't pointing at anything super dangerous and of course when i reholster i reholster like this right with the trigger with the grip safety completely unengaged which is one of the reasons why i like xds um because you can just be really, really safe. You know, when everything else fails, I was doing everything else kind of safe. I caught the shirt in here, even if the shirt had gotten in here somehow, you know, nothing was gonna happen, right? Again, even this, I'm sure, I'm sure I would comments that this is kind of stupid that I've been playing with it and all of a sudden I got my finger in here and the trigger, irregardless of the safety that there's ammo on the table and all this, but you know, whatever, it's safe it's unloaded so that's it um enough about the holster last thing i want to touch on um powder Re powder river precision uh spring kit updated sear installed in this made the trigger um much lighter it's much more a joy to shoot um you can watch that other video if you want my thoughts on the trigger kit um however uh 661 rounds I did get two light primer strikes um, with again with this ammo. Um, I don't know if you would consider the um, primers hard or not, but this is a, a typical and this sucks on the iPhone. It's hard to get it to focus. It doesn't want to focus too well. Um, let's see. This is I reload, so I picked up some brass. That's pretty much a I don't know which person in the class actually fired this because we just swept up a bucket bucket, and I took a bag coming home. Um, that's the typical primer strike. You know, when I had the light strike, um, at least one of them, I found the round again. It wasn't, it wasn't as pronounced as that, um, but it was, you know, a very small um, dimple on the primer. I had been unpriming a bunch of this brass and every one I pretty much looked at looked pretty similar to that. So I don't know if it was ammunition related, but... Uh, you know, again, this is what I was using. Sig Sauer frangible ammo. And, um, yeah, like I said, two light primer strikes. I was really bummed at the end of that first day. And I should say, 661 rounds. Um, this was in the first, first day. I got two, not on the second day. The first day, I fired a little over 200 rounds. So I got two light primer strikes. Second day was another 460 or so rounds or 450 and no issues on the second day. Um, second day, what I did encounter a few times is, and I've had it happen more with the XDS than my other guns, was we were doing timed holster draws and trying to shoot. And I had a bunch of times where I was having poor draws and I was drawing like this and I did not engage the grip safety or I didn't engage it enough, which will validate people out there that would say the grip safety can mess you up. It's... Yeah, it can it can happen. Um, part of me is is thinking is like, yeah, that happened in training. Makes me wonder what would happen when I'm actually out carrying. What would, how I would deal with that um, after it happened the first time. First time it happened, I paused for a second and then realized, oh my grip is screwed up and just readjusted and had no issue. Um, happened a couple times after that, and it wasn't even a second pause. It was, you know, dead pull. You know, dead pull. Dead pull crap so let's say to reset that pull you know trigger was trigger wouldn't move you know with a poor grip quickly readjusted you know probably cost me you know a quarter of a sec quarter of a second or so um but yeah that that's this grip safety if you ha pick up a gun that has a grip safety you need to train and train and train and train with it because it's going to happen to you um, and especially when you're in training, you know, I've had it happened, XDS service never happened once, X, my XDM had happened to me once, first time that I was trying to shoot around um, a barrier, 
you know, back months and months and quite a while ago. And then I quickly realized after what had happened with this, it's happened a, f a few more times because the grip's smaller and the, the grip safety is a little smaller, but it, you know, you quickly learn to readjust, but it is a real, it is a real thing that you need to train with. It's just, in my opinion, it's no different than learning how to deal with, um, you know, fail the feeds or your slide failing at the lock back or, or, you know, training to engage or disengage a safety when you're, um, on a 1911 or other ga uh, guns that have a manual safety. So that's about it. Um, so right now I would say I'm still pretty, pretty happy with the powder river precision trigger kit. It did a great job of, of making the trigger great. Um, a couple of light primer strikes are, uh, not a big fan of obviously um, I had none prior to the to the spring kit and now um, like I said 660 rounds at training probably another 150 or so before that so 800 rounds in I got two light primer strikes so it's something I'm gonna watch pretty much going forward um, to see try to figure out what the failure rate is um, you know it might be somewhat ammo based um, we'll see how it goes um, and if I ever get to the point where I deem it unacceptable um, you know, I'll probably put another update video and let everyone know. So that's about it. Uh, so let me know what you think of the video. Um, again, this is not the greatest stuff. This is iPhone on my reloading bench talking um, about uh, some of my experiences. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that I am getting a few views about uh, to to of my videos. Um, you know, I got a handful of subscribers, which feels nice. Um, and again, you know, thousands of views, which you know, it's an iPhone on a, on a loading bench and, uh, you know, people watch, which, uh, you know, feels pretty nice. Um, you know, so that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please add them. I'll try to update. I'll try to, you know, I don't get a crazy amount of traffic in the comment space, so I tend to be pretty active responding to them. Um, and if you have any other questions, you want to see another little video or two, um, I might just, you know, find five, 10, 15, or in my case, 17 minutes and uh, make a video to, uh, to show you what I think or show you what I got. All right. Thanks everyone. Uh, be out there, uh, be safe and, uh, thanks a lot.